Hello, this is Stacy Francis, and we are here for Riding the Market Roller Coaster Market Review. We are going to be going through some great information to help you better understand what's going on in this very, very volatile market and what you should be thinking about, particularly with your portfolio and with your long-term investments. I am the CEO and president of Francis Financial, and Francis Financial, as you know, is a simple and elegant wealth management firm. At Francis Financial, we have an award-winning team that guides individuals, uh, particularly women going through transition, such as divorce or widowhood, as well as families that have, $100 million, have $1 million in investable assets or more. If you're interested in finding out more how we can help you align your financial goals with your life goals, please do visit our website, www.francisfinancial.com. I'm very proud of the website as we just launched it a few weeks ago and have had wonderful, wonderful feedback about the website. Without further ado, however, I do want to launch into this information. We have a lot to go over today, and I know that we have quite a few questions of uh, individuals who have not been able to attend um, this live session. So we'll be going through those as well as any questions that you might have. If you have not worked with a webinar before, um, please feel comfortable to look around and get more in tune with the different capabilities this webinar has. In particular, there is a chat button. Anytime you have a question, please use that chat button and I will be sure to get to your question at the end of our presentation. If for some reason for time issues that we cannot get to it, I will be sure to follow up with an email from you. Again, if you're interested in learning more about our team or more about what we do working with women going through transition and successful families, visit www.francisfinancial.com or you can email me, Stacy, S-T-A-C-Y, at francisfinancial.com. Riding the Market Roller Coaster and Market Review. I can only imagine that the last several days have been pretty challenging for you and as such there's a lot of misinformation going around there that can be very scary so we're going to go through and talk a little bit about the market review what is really going on and what does it mean for your portfolio for the long term we're also going to talk about how to secure yourself and your portfolio for the long haul we are all going to be considering ourselves as lifetime investors. And lifetime investors is very important because you're investing not just for today, but for tomorrow, 5, 10, 20, 30, even maybe 40 years down the line. And then at the end, I'll be sure to have enough time to address any concerns, any questions that you have to make sure that you have the knowledge, the power, and comfort to understand your portfolio and have the financial peace of mind that you deserve. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our market review. And if you've been feeling that the markets are volatile, well, you are right. This year, much more than recent year, we've seen a lot more volatility. That means ups and downs in the market. In the U.S. market, 24% of the trading days that we've had in 2015, we've seen a movement of 1% more up or down compared to only 15% of those days occurring in 2014 or in 2013. And we believe that the current heightened volatility is very much going to continue. And let me tell you a little bit about what happened in August. Uh, this pretty much was driven a lot by China's demand of, and um, slowdown in China's demand and also in the concern of the Federal Reserve raising rates. In August, because of these two, quite two, two.
two events created a whole lot of challenge in that August time frame. August brought a sharp rise in the global stock market volatility, uh, really because of worries about global economic growth, particularly China, that weighed on investors. Stocks exhibited wild fluctuations throughout the latter half of August, largely driven by momentum investing as well as investor emotion, really rather than fundamental changes. U.S. equity market volatility, as measured by the VIX index, spiked more than 50%. It's the highest reading that we've seen since the 2008 financial crisis. Given this backdrop of volatility, global stock markets overall finished the month in negative territory. For example, large cap U.S. stocks declined over 10% in a six-day period. It's the first 10% correction that we've since seen since 2011. During the last week of August, these losses reversed, and we only had a month of 6% down. Developed international stocks also had a rough month. They finished down more than 7%, while emerging market stocks were the biggest loser with massive declines in the Chinese stock dragging down the index to 9%. As typically the case in a volatile market, people fly to investments. They flee to investments that are considered more secure. And as such, core bonds saw a whole lot of inflow of new money. The core bond index finished the month down, just slightly negative. It's not necessarily a good return in normal environments, but compared to stocks, it did quite well. Riskier se sections of the bond market, such as high-yield bonds, floating rate bonds, saw slightly negative declines, but nowhere near what we saw with equities and stocks. So what does this mean? The negative results that we've seen from U.S. stocks, developed international and emerging market stocks. Well, in our view, the recent market turmoil reflects a recognition by investors like you that there are concerns that they've had over the past few years, particularly about the slowdown in China, as well as showing unintended consequences from ultra-low interest rates. As you know, we never try to predict the precise timing of a market decline, but we were not surprised in any way by the recent turn of events. In fact, over the last 12 months, we have made some significant changes to our portfolios in light of our expected slowdown in the stock market. Our portfolios are slightly underweighted to risk assets, such as stocks, and we've put this money to work instead in favor of lower risk assets bonds. This is leading significantly to benefiting our performance over our portfolio benchmarks. All of our asset classes, in fact, outperform their benchmarks, something that we are very, very proud of. In fact, when we create portfolios, over this last year, we've skewed more towards creating more conservative portfolios that will perform much, much, much better in times of volatility and market drops. The only negative with that, other than the fact that you may not have as much upside on when markets go up high, is that you have that possibility that you won't participate in a market high. So with market drops, 
our portfolios see much less in losses. And with market increases, we have gains, but not necessarily such heady gains. We believe this volatility is actually really part of the unpredictable nature of investing in stocks. An important part of successful investing really involves riding out periods where nervous markets move up and down, investors are unsure. It makes it even more important that you stay f focused on the long-term fundamentals. It's critical that you have an investment process that has discipline and that you feel confident in your portfolio so that you don't make any panic-driven decisions. Panic-driven decisions are always detrimental to your long-term investing goals. And we hope that our clients take comfort in knowing that we have truly positioned their portfolios to be broadly diversified to withstand a whole range of different scenarios. In fact, in our point of view, we welcome short-term volatility because it can create some really interesting opportunities for us, such as being able to invest clients who had significant amounts of money on the side. The volatility, as I mentioned, we expect to continue, and as such has. We saw just yesterday, September 8th, the second best trading day in all of 2015 occur. The markets were on fire, and even today we're seeing significant upward movement in the markets. So ultimately, what this is telling us, it's telling us that the volatility we see is here to stay, but that these corrections are just that, that they are corrections, that we don't expect a recession moving forward. Regarding where we expect the market to go in the future, there's a whole lot of question. Overall, we expect the U.S. stock market, the European, and even emerging markets to increase over time. This chart shows you where the U.S. stock market is trading right here at the top, where we see European at the bottom, and then right in the middle, global markets, which includes both U.S. emerging markets as well as developed international. Ultimately, what this chart is telling us is that the types of stocks that are most interesting and have the lowest value right now is in the area of European developed, much less pricey than where U.S. stocks are trading. And for the case that U.S. stocks will continue to rise, as well as developed international, let me tell you a little bit more about that. The U.S. economic data has actually been positive. It's been on the upswing since the first quarter of, of 2015, and growth has averaged 2.2% for the first half of 2015. While it isn't great growth, it's definitely right in line with the average growth realized since the end of the global financial crisis. And we expect durable growth to continue from the United States as there's little excess in the real economy and no inflationary pressure to put, push the Federal Reserve to increase any re interest rates any faster than the market can truly handle. European growth has also shown some improvement as of late while their second quarter growth was modestly disappointing, though. European growth had averaged 1.1% in the first half of 2015, and it should also continue to benefit from cyclical upturns in spending. We're seeing more spending. Europe was in a recession for most of 2012 and 2013, and so it has considerable room to expand at a moderate pace. European stocks, based on this chart, as you can see, and as I mentioned, are trading at very attractive valuations, 
especially based on their normalized earning power. Based on current earnings, European stocks are fairly valued, but they're also cheap compared to U.S. stocks. As far as the range of returns that you could expect, it is very much highlighted here. In our base case scenario here highlighted in gray, we continue to see the U.S. economy and the global economy more bro broadly on a slow path of recovery from the 2008 financial crisis. Our outlook for global growth has moderated somewhat, but we still see significant growth potentially in the area of developed international as well as emerging markets. The growth expected for the U.S. equities, about 2.5% each year over the next five years. This in turn is partially because of the high valuations that we see in the U.S. stock market. Developed international Europe, you can see is closer to an 11.5% expected return each year over the next five years. And then below that, you'll see an unusually wide return expectation for interna international emerging markets. We have a large range starting at 7.4% all the way up to 136 The large range in this area is because of our concern, particularly about China. If China has a very hard fall, then we would expect to be receiving returns of about 7.5% from emerging markets. If we don't see that hard fall and more of a orderly recovery in that scenario from emerging markets, we will be up potentially even past 13.5% return each year from emerging markets over the next five years. What I have to tell you is that even in the very hard fall scenario in the Chinese economy, we are expecting emerging markets to fare better in returns than our U.S. stocks. That's something to understand and to truly comprehend about why emerging markets are important to your portfolio, even in this time of uncertainty. When we look at fixed income asset classes or, or bonds, you can refer to them either as fixed income or bonds, we see that the biggest gainers over the next five years are going to be high yield bonds as well as floating rate loans. This too is why we have significant exposure to these two asset classes in your portfolio. We have, of course, a range of expectations here. Our scenarios reflect and really acknowledge that, you know, in, in a certain world, we cannot confidently predict outcomes at 100%. But we can definitely confidently evaluate a range of possible outcomes to, uh, to truly understand the full scope of potential returns for one asset class versus another. And here you'll see in the bear case scenario, one of those outcomes. Going back to recession, if that were to occur, again, a scenario we do not expect based on our models, but if so, we would be looking at losses from all types of equities, U.S. equities as well as developed international for the emerging markets area, area, we do not have exact range because this will be, of course, dependent on how far a fall that China would have. The other asset classes, you can see that less risky asset classes, such as bonds, still perform relatively well during that more bearish scenario. Now, everybody loves bull cases. Everybody loves large returns. And if we do see that, then we're looking at 
really heady returns for all areas of equities, in particular U.S. equities, almost a 10% return each year over the next five years, developed international, upwards of almost a 19% return in emerging markets. The story we would all love to see returns of, of 20% or even beyond from that asset class. We have still decent returns from floating rate and high yield bonds here, but the types of bonds that truly we are not going to see returns, anything very exciting from, would be in the area of investment grade bonds. Over the last year, we have been diversifying our clients out of investment grade bonds towards bonds such as floating rates and also high yields. So our current portfolios are, are very well positioned in that scenario. With regards to what our clients, what you might be going through, this is a wonderful chart that talks about the average feelings that the investor goes through today. And we know that emotion pay, plays an enormous role when it comes to investing. When an investor panics, you can forget about the studies, the stats, history. All logic goes out the window. And unfortunately, at the point when most people can no longer take this pain, it often occurs at the tail end of a market downturn, right before the market is about to recover and take off. When this happens, it takes people a long time to trust the market again, and they often will also miss out on that sharp rebound that occurs right after a big market drop. The chart in front of you truly helps you visualize the feelings that many investors experience. So this is a market cycle, and the line here tell, shows you the returns of the market starting at zero. So when that market from zero, we are seeing positive returns, emotions that the typical investor will feel will be excitement, thrill, <clears throat> when the market is peaking, euphoria. At this point, your average investor is willing to take on the most risk. When you start to see the market go down, and, and maybe you felt some of these emotions over these last few weeks too, feeling anxiety, denial, fear, desperation. As the market continues to go into negative ter territory, from desperation moving to maybe panic, capitulation, despondence, and then finally at the lower end of depression. Interestingly enough, at this depression piece is the highest potential for earnings. This is where, at a market low, you have, as an investor, have the most opportunity to make your money work hard for you, such as the ideal time that if you've been sitting on too much money that's in your emergency fund and it should be investing for you, money that's sitting in your checking and your savings and you know you have too much cash, that is the point of best potential return. However, a typical investor would have a challenge as they're feeling depression, they're feeling panic, of taking that as an opportunity to put their money in. But if you did so, you would see as the market returns, you would have hope. You'd have relief. You would have optimism. These are the typical emotions that many investors experience during an entire market cycle, which is what we have here in front of you. 
And the reason why we wanted to share this with you is that the feelings you have are normal. And one of the best things you can do to make your portfolio work for you, to make sure that you're on track, is to honor and recognize that because of the many years of behavioral finance study, that we know these emotions are normal and that you need to recognize that and move beyond it. In fact, we put together some tips for helping secure yourself and your portfolio for the long haul. And the first is trying to continue to invest no matter what the market is doing. Though your confidence in the market might be shaken, you don't have to stop investing altogether because that potentially will jeopardize your long-term goals. A good compromise can be an automatic investment plan for continued contributions. A great example of this is investing in your retirement plan at work, such as your 401k. If needed, you can start small. Set a money, a piece of amount of money aside each month with systematic withdrawals, either from your paycheck in your retirement plan or from your bank account. Over time, these investments really do add up. And one tried and true method that we recommend to many of our clients is what's called dollar cost averaging. This strategy can be an effective way of purchasing shares over the long term at a lower price range. That means that when prices are down, you get more shares for the dollars that you put in the market. So you're happy you got a bargain. And when prices are up, you may be buying fewer shares when you put the money in the market, but overall your portfolio has gone up in value. So you're happy. So overall, it's a win-win. Another tip for securing your portfolio for the long haul is diversify, diversify, diversify. You hear it all the time, and it couldn't be more appropriate than during volatile markets. You're an investment professional, your stockbroker, your wealth manager can help you build a portfolio that includes diversified mutual funds, exchange-traded funds, bonds, using many different asset classes in terms, other words, stocks, U.S. stocks, developed international, emerging markets, as well as different types of bonds. Making sure that it's broadly diversified will help you weather any type of market. Don't fixate on the short term. You are investing for the long haul. You are a lifetime investor. And the longer you hold your portfolio, the less volatility may impact it. The potential returns also will be greater. So when those account statements come in, look at them, understand them, and file them. And look forward to the future market upturn. Take advantage of this type of market. The silver lining of a volatile market is the many buying opportunities it represents for investors. Putting more cash in the market while the prices are low will give you phenomenal rewards later. These are just a few ideas to help you stay on course. And one of those is also to use us as a re research. We do research and we're intimately familiar with your goals and your values, as well as the composition of your portfolio. We have invested your portfolio, taking into account your risk tolerance, and it is very well diversified. We keep an eye on your portfolio every day to determine if changes need to be made. And you definitely should use us as a resource. The market does not need to be scary. And we pulled some quotes from three very interesting individuals. Robert Arnott said, 
and investing what is comfortable is rarely profitable. Robert Allen said something that I think is so insightful. How many millionaires do you know who have become wealthy by investing in a savings account? I rest my case. And Peter Lynch, one of the most famous financial figures in the world, said exactly just this. You get recessions. You have stark market declines. If you don't understand that's going to happen, then you're not ready, and you won't do well in the markets. With this, I'd like to answer some of the questions that have come in before. Please do also use your chat as well, and I will be sure to answer your question. So the first question is, at what point would you make changes to the portfolio? Well, we do not believe in sticking with uh, investments through thick and thin, and our philosophy is very much so looking at performance and essentially jettisoning investments that over time the returns are not comparable to the risk that they pose in the portfolio. We would take on more risk assets. That's a fancy way of saying take on more stocks, add more money to stocks. If we saw significant, significant losses in the market and we did not see a corresponding weakness in the economy that was significant. We would add more to bonds and actually reduce the risk of our portfolios even more if we started to see some significant risk in the economy, particularly weakening in the economy. Where we are at t today is a situation that we actually expected. We expected this by reducing the risk in all of our portfolios. To be honest, we've spent the last year telling our clients that this was going to happen. After a point, clients look at you and say, yeah, 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 I'm not sure when that is. You told me that last quarter. Not that anyone is happy about the current market volatility that we're seeing, but it is something that we very much expected. We keep our eye on the market. We keep our eye on the macro and micro economic information that is currently available. We rely also on our own in-house research as well as our research partners, Litton and Gregory, and as such are continuing to look for opportunities. Right now we see the opportunity investing in the market on the cheap. And going forward, if we start to see changes either for more opportunity or that there's more risk at that point, we will definitely be making tweaks and changes to our portfolio. Good question. Another question was very much about, do we expect to see the market continue to go downhill? Well, I think that one of the most important things is understanding how do we choose investments and, and our fundamental approach to long-term investing. We're highly confident in the soundness and likely success over the long run of the market. We know that market prices can definitely get out of whack compared to their fundamentals and earnings over the shorter run period. It can even last for a few years. But the tendency of the market is for it to go back to the norm. The reality is that the basis for our investment philosophy and, and how we choose to build well-diversified portfolios, it's skewed to buying undervalued assets. And we try to stay away from overvalued assets. Essentially, it's a simple way of saying, we like a bargain. When you walk into Ann Taylor and you see 50% off on the suits, we get excited. We tend to veer towards that section of the store versus the section with the full price. 
suits. We know that getting the timing right is not something that you can predict 100%. So we know that often we must wait patiently, similar to what we saw over the last 12 months of truly diversifying our portfolios and taking as much risk out of it as possible without sacrificing return. We've been doing this over the 12 months and we've sat patiently knowing that a correction was about to come. We also realize that markets tend to normalize and that this is a period of volatility and that eventually they will normalize to less volatility like we saw in 2012, 2013, as well as 2014. It's this philosophy that allows us of buying undervalued assets and being patient to grossly outperform the typical investor. The typical investor makes much less than those working with advisors. And that is because they are more likely to make mistakes with their portfolio, such as taking money out of the market at the perfect time when you should be investing. We have another question that just came in. Should people who are drawing off their portfolio change their strategy? Many of our clients are taking money from their portfolio and living on pieces of their portfolio. And what we always try to do is have some what we call dry powder. Dry powder is cash that's sitting in your account invested in a money market. And that is powerful because if you need money and we have to go into your portfolio after significant losses and sell, you are locking in those losses. So my change to your strategy might be that if you don't have dry powder in your account, when the market does recover, that you take some of those gains and you bank them. You keep them in a money market or something as such so that as you're living off your portfolio, if we see significant declines, you're not forced into a position of selling and locking in those losses because of your current cash flow and budget needs. Great question. Um, and a, a, another question that just came in, and actually I think the final question we have to make sure that we, we stay within our time frame of, of 40 minutes today, if I have money sitting in cash, would now be a great time to invest? Um, the answer for that is exactly yes. Now is the perfect time to invest. If you have money that's sitting in a, a checking, <gasps> ugh, that creates a shudder in me because you receive no interest on even money in a checking, extra money in a savings account as well, those are great opportunities to invest. You need three to six months of your living expenses in those accounts as well as any money you might need for shorter term purchases in the next year or potentially even two. But other than that, that money that's outside of those two needs should be working for you, and now is the perfect time to invest. It's like walking into your favorite store. For me, it's Ann Taylor. And every single item is 50% off. That is a dream for anyone. And that is what you're looking at as far as the stock market, of being able to buy in the down market and watch that money grow for you over time. I want to say a great big thank you for, for joining us today and sharing your questions. It is a very volatile market. And what I would just say to you is know that we are here for you. And please do reach out to my email, stacy.com. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and give us a call and also visit our website. Thank you and have a great day.